Hey, is there anyone out there? We're trying to queue Arena. Oh, look, it's a new patch, and you might be wondering what is going to change. Weather effects have been added to Stormwind and Orgrimmar. All right, let's pack it up. Game is fixed. Thanks for watching. But seriously, our team of pro players did a bunch of work and have thoroughly inspected every corner of 9.1.5. And we're here today to tell you what actually matters and changes you can expect to see in the meta for Season 2. But before we get into it, if you're looking to stay ahead of the competition this patch, be sure to subscribe and consider checking out skillcap.com. For prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get ahead of the competition right now with our 250 rating gain guarantee. Click the link in the video description to learn more. One of the biggest changes this patch was an overhaul to the Covenant system. Now, once you reach level 80 Renown, you will be able to freely swap to a new Covenant without restriction. On its surface, this is a much needed change since some classes have had to painfully swap Covenants multiple times as abilities have been rebalanced. On top of that, once you reach level 80 Renown, you will be able to instantly boost alts to level 40 with an item from a vendor in Orbos. All in all, this should open up more experimentation, especially considering that some Covenant abilities are being updated this patch, which we will be covering later on. Some classes that will benefit tremendously from this change are Warriors, Rogues, Druids, Priests, Warlocks, and Shamans, all of which have multiple Covenant choices between their specs. The next big change is a slight rework to the existing Honor upgrade system. More upgrade tiers are being added, while instance PvP item levels are being increased for lower ranks. This should help reduce some gear disparities between players, but some problems still exist. In this patch, you will also be able to buy a bind on account loot box for conquest points that awards a random piece of unranked conquest gear. Once again, this should help with one of the many challenges that alts face later on into the arena season. The cost of upgrading gear still presents a massive hurdle, especially at the 2100 tier, where fully upgrading your gear set to max eye level requires over 50,000 honor. We devoted an entire video explaining why gearing in Shadowlands needs rework in PvP, and as many people pointed out, a massive overhaul is needed. But we want to know what you think. How would you fix the gearing system? Is there one obvious solution you would like implemented? Let us know in the comments below. Moving on, let's go over the major class changes coming in the patch. There has been a PvP-wide nerf to Fleshcraft, and its total absorption has been capped at 30% HP in PvP combat. Any excess shield over that amount will be reduced when the gates open in Arena and BGs, preventing some classes like Feral Druid from stacking HP multipliers to get massive shields before the game starts. And speaking of Ferals, Strength of the Wild received a considerable nerf in the patch. This talent was previously over-budgeted and gave Feral Druids overtuned off-healing. The goal of this nerf is to put them in line with other hybrids. At the moment, Necrolord Feral Druids have too much personal bulkiness and team-wide healing, which is evident in their ability to carry double DPS 2v2 comps with as much healing as a normal healer. And speaking of having too many heals, Mage Defense has been nerfed in 9.1.5. The Triune Ward Legendary has been best in slot the entire expansion, simply because it gives mages massive damage absorption on a relatively short cooldown. Some of you might be asking why a 15% reduction on their shields matters, and it's due to its interaction with the Diverted Energy Conduit, which heals the mage based off damage absorption. The nerf to Triune will help put mage bulkiness more in line with other classes while opening up more experimentation with other legendary options. And if mages really want to experiment this patch, Frost received some considerable damage buffs to Icicles, Frostbolt, and Flurry. This is on top of a change to both Icy Veins and Arcane Power, which can no longer be dispelled in PvP. This is a huge change since these two specs have been underperforming in Shadowlands despite buffs in previous patches. For the past few patches, Fire has reigned supreme as the best mage spec, due mostly to the extra control option of Dragon's Breath combined with a relatively simple win condition. It's doubtful that the buffs to Frost will elevate it above Fire for the rest of this season, but get ready to see Frost in more caster setups. One partner Frost mages might look for are Warlocks, who got some key buffs to every spec this patch. Dark Soul can no longer be dispelled for Affliction and Destruction. Although this wasn't the only thing holding them back in the Shadowlands meta, it is a step in the right direction to adapt the class to the offensive pacing of Season 2. For Demo and Destro, Decimating Bolt received two key changes, including a cast time reduction and dispel immunity for its buffs, which have increased crit chance and damage from the Shard of Annihilation legendary. Once again, this isn't the only thing holding Warlocks back this season, since their survivability is really their main issue, but it is a step in the right direction to help revive the class from its Shadowlands dormancy. And speaking of being dormant, I am sure you have found yourself dead a few times this season to Spinning Crane Kick. We made an entire video around damage multipliers in Shadowlands, 
and monks have more than every spec in the game. Fortunately, a few new multipliers are being nerfed, including Bone Dust Brew, which is now being reduced by 33% in PvP. This is on top of a nerf to Dance of Chi-G, which is the infamous proc effect that gives monks one of their one-shot options. Oddly enough, these nerfs are being paired with a buff to Spinning Cram Kick, which previously required stacking a debuff on six separate targets in order to deal max damage. Now it will cap out at five targets for the same damage increase, meaning monks will have an easier time front-loading damage with Dance of Chi-G procs. There are certainly more ways to nerf monk damage, and these are just a few of the multipliers that have broken their burst in Season 2. One thing that could need nerfs in the future is the Kiefer's Skyreach Legendary, which gives monks 50% crit chance for 6 seconds after using Tiger Palm, which is almost identical to the Mark of the Master Assassin Legendary, which has undergone multiple nerfs this expansion. Rounding out the most important class changes this patch, hunters everywhere are rejoicing as Revive Pet has had its cast time reduced, and Mend Pet can no longer be dispelled. Regardless of your opinion on BM Hunters, it is super punishing to have your pet die this expansion, and it usually forces you to use your biggest defensive cooldown in order to guarantee a res. Hopefully, this change balances out the counterplay involved in pet killing strategies, since right now it is a one-sided interaction. But if hunters are wanting to change this patch, then the buffs to marksmanship might be a bit refreshing. A few key abilities have had flat damage increases in PvP. Marks started off strong this expansion, but quickly tapered off after a few nerfs and the rising popularity of Beast Mastery. Some players have found success with the spec in Shadowlands, and with these buffs, we could see more experimentation, especially if BM gets significantly toned down. Moving on, we have some minor class changes in the patch, which might have small effects on PvP balance. Frost and Unholy DKs are seeing some damage increases, which come as a welcome gift since they have been severely underrepresented this season. Buffs in 9.1 were not enough to fully res them from the dead, and these changes might not make much of a difference. Still though, buffs are buffs, and we might start to see more DKs try out Unholy, although we certainly expect Frost to remain the go-to spec. We might also see Frost DKs look to Ice Cap as part of their standard build, but that remains to be seen. Some Holy Priest heals have received PvP specific buffs, and although these might seem like substantial increases, Holy Priest healing is less focused on casted spells and centers more on instants like Serenity and Prayer of Mending. In any case, these buffs come at a crucial time as Disc seems to have overtaken Holy in the Season 2 meta. Although Holy is still a staple in a few setups, it has fallen behind Disc in our recent tier list update. Shadow is also getting a minor buff to Surrender to Madness. Although this talent is rarely selected in 3v3, it does have a niche place in the meta with the Megalomania talent. Right now, Shadow Priest PvP talents are relatively bloated, and it is hard to slot in a risky offensive spell in a fast-paced meta, but this buff might make the talent slightly more appealing in certain matchups. Moving on, Paladin Covenants have been shaken up slightly with buffs to both Necrolord and Night Fae. With the ability to switch Covenants seamlessly, this could open up some experimentation with these dramatically underrepresented choices. For the most part, Ret Paladins haven't moved away from Kyrian all expansion, due primarily to its added damage and front-loaded burst. But if Shadowlands has taught us anything, it's that every road points to Necrolord, meaning we could see some Covenant swaps later this season. And finally, speaking of switching to Necrolord, we might start seeing more Necrolord BM Hunters this patch, as their active ability now includes a 10% physical damage increase on affected targets. Death Chakram is a spell you probably never heard of, and it's because BM Hunters have been Venther for the entirety of Shadowlands. This Necrolord ability might seem underwhelming on its own as a 45 second cooldown, but remember that Bestial Wrath gets its CD reset with Barbed Shot, effectively allowing both cooldowns to line up with each other for most of the game. With the strength of BM Hunter consistent damage, this might encourage some brave players to make the Covenant swap, and if Necrolord BM Hunters become meta, don't blame us. And that wraps up our coverage for patch 9.1.5. If you're looking to increase your rating this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be uploading exclusive arena commentaries updated for the patch. Joining today will give you instant access to all of our videos, as well as an invite to the premium section of our Discord, where you can get on-demand help from pro players for all of your patch needs. So don't delay. If you're wanting rating gains, check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Anyway, we hope you found this useful. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.